all you beautiful, anointed, mighty men and women of God. Well, I'm just believing that you're having an amazing night tonight. And Jesus Christ, you've had you've been praying for divine appointments. You are expecting divine assignments by the most high king in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm hoping that you do. Listen, I'm so excited, man. I tell you what. The more, listen, this is one thing that God has showed me, man. He showed me this a long time ago. And what I love to give you guys examples. And listen, the only reason why I tell you stuff about me is because I'm living it. I'm walking in it. I'm walking in the truth. I'm walking in what the word says. I'm doing what my God does and watching him show up and blow up in my life. And every time I go through these hiccups and trials and tribulations, these bumps in the road, my king, he, he helps me out. And that's why I preach the way that I do. I come to you. I tell you, hey, man, look. I just went through the same problem that you do, and you think it's funny that I'm talking to you, but I've already went through this. This is how God got me through it. This is what I had to do it. So I give you, I feed you this information. So when you come up to this situation, screw you go around left, get out in front, man, you dodge that trial and tribulation. You learn from wisdom and knowledge. You pray for these things. You learn from demonstration. You learn from experience. And these things that are coming at you, man, you just trample them, man, like the boss that you are, like the son or daughter of the Most High King does with your shoulders back, walking through it with a big chest, knees to chest, knowing, man, that you got a crown on your head. You're a royal priesthood, man. You are called to be in the royal army. You are called to be who God says you are, not what the world tells you and not what anybody else says. I don't know who you're riding with. Listen to me. Let me pray. Let me pray. Let's get started. Let's give this to the Holy Ghost and we're going to trust him to do what he always does. Bring fire and fire in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we love you so much. Father, I submit myself to you, Lord. I submit not only my body, but I submit my tongue and my mouth to you, King. Let it be your words that come out of my mouth, not mine. Let it be, let it be edifying. Let it bless people. Let it help people. Let it feed somebody's spirit to help them grow and become who you call them to be. Help them to walk in their full fruition of who you say they are, the full power and authority that you have given them. And stomp mud holes in the de and the devil. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we praise you. We love you. We thank you for your son. And thank you for loving us first. In your mighty name, amen. You praise God. What's going on? What's going on? Tanya, what it do? What it do? Listen, uh, I see you guys' comments. Keep them coming, man. Uh, I'm trying to tell you, hey, man, when you shout me down, you get me fired up. The more you come, the more I'm bringing it, man. And I've got some smoke today. I've got some, man, God has just really been lighting me up. And whew, what was I going to tell them before that? This Holy Ghost fire, man. This is what I hear from people. Man, dude, you're on fire, man. You're on fire. When did this happen? Seven years ago. Huh? Seven years ago. Really? You're just not? No, dude. Listen to me, man. Listen to what, I, what I'm telling you. When Jesus come upon the scene, John, uh, John the Baptist, what was he baptizing in? He was baptizing in water, right? But Jesus come on the scene. What is he baptizing in? He said, I'm baptizing in the Holy Spirit and fire. And what? Fire! Let me tell you something, man. I'm not here to tear down churches, but I'm here to bring awareness and how you should be walking and who you who you're representing. Who are you riding with, man? Who do you ride with every day when you ride out? And it, this this Ephesians three, it's amazing how you know. And I want to give a shout out again to to my pro. Uh, production manager Scott Miner. Him and I study this word. He breaks it down. We get in plus what I have plus what he gets, and we put this together. And I'm I'm hoping and praying that it totally blesses you, man, and that it just adds to your repertoire. It adds more firepower to to your spirit, man, to your soul. You hear me? I'm I'm praying that this will help you to apply it to your life, and you're not just hearers of the word, but you're Doers of the word. Now, watch this. If he baptizes with Holy Ghost fire, and you go to a church and your pastor is not preaching Holy Ghost fire, how can you walk out of the church and expect to be on fire? I don't understand that. 
And I'm trying to tell you, if you know who your king is, you know who your dad is, you realize what he did on that cross for you. You are important. Man, I don't know how many times we need to hear this, but you matter. You are important. You were put here on earth to have a purpose. Now is not the time to be sitting back and, and laying down on the couch. Not when God blasted you with Holy Ghost fire. Now, I want to share, I want to share a couple of stories for you with you before we get going on this, man, because this is really good. Ephesians 3 is really good. But I got I got a question for you. Now I understand that I'm an extremist. I, I get it, man. I know that I'm I'm wide open on everything I do, especially for my father, man. Every situation that I get, every divine appointment that I get into, I want to maximize the gifts that our father gave us. You hear me? God has given me a gift of, well, shoot, what? I've got the Holy Spirit. I got the Holy Spirit, the same one that raised Lazarus and Jesus from the dead. Come on. I got a mouth. I got a tongue. I can speak. I was baptized in the Holy Ghost fire. So, I mean, what else should we need right there, man? Adapt. To, what did Paul say? He said, man, when I'm with the Greeks, I'll be acting like the Greeks. When I'm with the Jews, I'm acting like the Jews. So where you're at, who you're into, you need to be able to adapt. Don't tell me that you can't because my, if my, God is telling us that's what we need to do. Now, watch this. If I, if I came out, listen, if I came out and I gave you a 2023 Corvette built to the hilt, nitrous on it, I mean, the stick shift, six gears, on the dash, it reads 225. Let me ask you this. Would you take it out to the highway and just mildly shift gears, run, get it up to about 70, maybe 75, push it, speed limit 70, might hit 75, and just cruise on down the road? Or are you going to get out there, whoa, man, you get up on that dag on 95, you're talking about, rah, rah, rah. man, redlining, all gears, man, seeing that, that that thing on the dash is true, see if it's real. Bust it out 200 miles an hour because it's built to go that fast. Would you maximize that Corvette out? Well, some may not. Some may just go 120. That's okay. But you're doing extreme. You want to see what it's got. You want to call somebody's bluff. But look here, man. God has given you gifts and you gifts in you to go out and maximize what we have. So why are we not, why are we not maximizing the gifts that we got just like that Corvette? This is what got you. Man, I was in the shower. And I was praying. I was talking to God. This is where I get most of my sermons is in the shower. God speaks to me so much in the shower. <clears throat> I already had, I mean, all day, God be rocking and be talking to me, speaking to me. And that's how I bring the stuff that I bring. But watch this. It matters what we pray. It so matters what we pray. And I was in the shower. Listen to what I pray. I don't know who this is for, but I pray that it blesses you. But our words have power. And what the Bible says in 1 Peter that God withholds nothing from us through the wisdom and knowledge of him, right? So watch this. I said, Father, with my arms raised, Father God, I ask that you just fill me. Watch this. I ask that you just fill me with more Holy Ghost fire. Father, I ask that you give me double portion. Give me triple portion from the soles of my feet to the crown of my head, down my arms and out my fingers. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, give me everything that I can handle according to the maturity of my walk, according to the way that you design my body. So I am equipped. I am ready. When I put on my, when my, with, with my suit, my Holy Ghost suit that's going to take on all fiery darts, that I'm ready to go. I'm ready for war. Because if you're not ready for war, I'm trying to tell you your adversary is straight up. He's out to steal, kill, and destroy. So I don't know about you, but I fought in the ring for 15 years. I've told you guys this. I was rated number one in the state of Florida, number three in the nation in kickboxing. And I promise you, when I stepped in that ring, I did not look at my opponent and go, man, I hope I don't hit him too hard, man. His kids might hate that. Heck no, man, I'm ready to put my fist straight through the back of his head. I'm going to put my sidekick up underneath his chin, put him to sleep. That was my mentality. I promise you that is what the enemy is coming out at you with. You guys take this word right here as mediocrity. Now watch this. This is big right here. This is what my king showed me. This is what God showed me today. He said, you know, Mark, there's a spirit of mediocrity running through our nation running through the churches. He said, I don't get it. He said, I, I give you a spirit of excellence, but you're operating in a spirit of mediocrity. Uh-oh, did I step on some toes? Man, I bet. 
Are you operating in the spirit of mediocrity or are you operating in the spirit of excellence? Because listen to me, you are made in the image of Christ, just like our father. And when he looked at you, he made you for a purpose, not to sit on the couch, not to be lazy, not to be expecting somebody else to go pray for that person, not for somebody else to lay hand upon the sick, not one to cast out demons. We are warring, man. I'm trying to tell you, Jesus said, when they slept, man, listen, in the book of Luke, Jesus was blindfolded, man, and they sucker punched him. So what's up? Where's your boys now? Jesus said, man, listen to me. If this was my kingdom, my servants would be fighting. We'd be what? We'd be fighting. I'm trying to tell you, we got to understand what is going on in this world when we have an enemy, an adversary that is out to steal, kill, and destroy. And I'm trying to tell you, these word curses that you guys are speaking out, that you're speaking over yourself, that you're speaking over other people, it has crucial power. And I'm trying to tell you, just like in the book of Job, when Satan run to God and went to God to try him, there is nothing that goes past God. But the scripture says straight up that we are talking is a two-edged sword that it can speak life it can speak death it can puncture even bone marrow our words are that powerful they are that strong but yet we spit word curses over ourselves oh i promise you three days ago i heard one of my christian friends go i'm too dumb i can't i don't understand how it does that well you just you just stamped with with assurance that you're going to be dumb. I guarantee the enemy is going to go to God and the courts of heaven and say, hey, she says she's dumb. Now you're going to start forgetting stuff. You're going to, I'm trying to tell you, man, the enemy is out to get you, man. We have to be careful of what we say, who we're riding with, and who we are co-signing with. This is why I'm telling you, man, so much. We have to be in the word. We have to be equipped. We got to understand what the enemy is using against us. What did Paul say? We have to know the tricks. We have to know the strategies of the enemy. Why? So he does not take advantage of us. You hear me? We need to be warring for our kids. We need to be warring for ourselves. We need to be putting a hedge of protection around us, our kids, having angels fight our thing. Because I'm trying to tell you, we have to put things into action, into the word. It don't just happen. Why God give us a mouth? And let me ask you this. Here's from something for somebody. Because I've had, oh, help me, Lord. Look here, man. I have too many Baptist pastors. And I'm gonna I'm gonna call out the denomination because they don't believe they're cessationists, man. They believe that the that the the Holy Ghost power stopped. With the disciples. They said the disciples were the only ones that had it. There is no more power. But I got something to break against that. First Corinthians 1 7 says that God will withhold no spiritual gift. What? No spiritual gift. So that right there is telling me right there. Then we get the great commission. This is what another dude said. He said, Hey man, so what? You think you can drink poison? I said, not only do I think I can drink poison, brother, my Jesus said I can. He said, you can drink poison and it will not harm you. Would I go do it? No, nah, man, I'm not going to prove myself. But my king says that true. If I call upon my name of my Jesus and that junk happened, I'm trying to tell you, if I ride out, it was my time. And if I don't, it's because of what my Bible says. How much are you believing it? How much are you riding with it? Or how much are you going, yeah, but I'm not worth it, man. I can pray for healing over here for Bobby Sue or a Jimbo over here, man. But yeah, I can't receive. I'm the, watch this. We'll get into this here in a little bit about Paul. Paul said, I am the least. He said, I'm the least of the most, man. The way that Paul looked at himself, he man, because watch this. Before Paul, before he was Paul, he was Saul of Tarsus, right? And he was persecuting Christians. I'm trying to run up and sucker punch them, hang them, kill them, looking for them. And, the, and he's getting permission to go in and do these kind of things. But on that road to Damascus, he got hit with what? He got hit with the Holy Ghost, man. God hit him. And he's like, Lord, is that you? Blinded him. You hear me? But God removed those scales, filled him with the Holy Ghost. And look at the damage that he has done. But what I'm getting at, listen to me. There's a point to why I'm bringing this to you. It matters what we pray. And it matters how you look at our God. Our God, we serve a big God. We serve a huge God. Why are our prayers so small? Why do we make our God so small? Why do we make ourselves look so small in the eyes of our King? 
Man, I'm trying to tell you. My God said, watch this in Malachi 3.10. I don't know why the word this come from. Malachi 3.10, God said, I will open up the heavens, the windows of heaven and pour down blessings upon you. And if the enemy tries to intercept it, I'll devour him. The windows of heaven, what? This is how much God loves you. He wants to give you everything that you're praying for, but according to the maturity, but according to the doubt and unbelief, which one are you receiving? Are you co-signing with the devil? Are you co-signing with God? Are you riding with the king? Are you believing what he said? Because let me hit you with a story. Jonah, Jonah, with the spirit of rebellion. My spiritual mother told me for the longest time, look here, bro, you've got the spirit of Jonah. I'm like, what is that? I run from preaching for the longest time. I wasn't the one. Same thing with Paul. I can't even make this up. You're talking about somebody who ran drugs from the time they were 14 till the time I was 41. I was, man, listen, I was dumpster juice, man. I wouldn't have peed on me if I was on fire. I'm not even going to glorify that. But that was the mindset that Paul had. And what did God say? The least I will move to the front. The meek will inherit the earth. I'm trying to tell you, humbleness has power. And I'm telling you what, we need to focus on how we are praying. And I'm going to give you a story right here. I'm going to give you a story right here, and I'm not going to get into too much. You guys, I'm going to have my boy Joshua Johns coming from Brazil. Man, he is coming to my, he's coming to my house uh, tomorrow. My boy, what up, Joshua? What's up, big dog? Love you, bro. And I'm trying to tell you, mark my words, man. Mark my words. There's going to be a, there's going to be a Holy Ghost revival in the state of Florida. Now, let me tell you why. You say, Mark, that's a lot. That's a big word to say. I serve a big God. I'm learning my lessons. Like God told me a long time ago, when I moved to Tampa, watch this. I'm going to get into this, man, but I, this is for somebody. You are not small. You are called. And I'm trying to tell you, it took one person when Jonah went up and saved that whole town. But he had that spirit of rebellion. He was running. You hear me? One person. He didn't want to see them boys get saved up there in Nineveh. And I'm not going to concentrate on that. But it was one person. God said, no, nah, you're going to go. Listen, and God's going to make stuff pop off. He's going to make stuff happen. He can even use a rebellious, rebellion personality attitude. You hear me? Because watch this. Jonah didn't obey him. He didn't. He ran. He got on that ship. He hid. And I'm trying to tell you, watch this. God's so powerful when he jumped out the boat. Them boys got saved on the boat because they. he's like, you say your God is the one that caused all this storm? Throw him over the board. He throws up over the board. Everybody gets smoothed out. Them boys get saved up right there. Jonah gets up in the belly of that, of that fish. And watch this. God told the fish, spit him up on the shore. What did the fish do? Yes, sir. I got you, God. Poof. Come on, man. And where did he spit him at? Right there in Jaffa. You hear what I'm saying? God's got something for you. Are you walking in it? Are you ready to receive it? Because I'm here to encourage you. You're looking at, man, I'm trying to tell you, I am the least. I'm the one that was the lowest down there. I was the one that was laughing at the Christian when I'm slinging dope, and I got pockets full of money, vehicles, motorcycles, cop man, listen. And then I ain't got none of it. You heard me? I don't have any of that right now. But back when I was got when I moved to Tampa. Two years ago, this is what God told me. I want you to start praying big and dream big. I'm like, wow. Um, what you mean, God? I said, I think I do pray big. What am I doing? What am I missing? He goes, you make me too small. I said, well, I'm listening, man. I'm trying. What am I praying big for? The kingdom of God. Matthew 6, says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Now, this is rocking when I'm starting to preach. I'm starting to get into churches preaching. I'm not even a pastor at church, but I got pastors calling me up. Hey, man, you come preach at my church? Hey, bro, um, can you bring that fire to my church? Da, da, da. I preached five times in Tampa more than I preached over here on the East Coast. These people didn't even know me. But my God said, dream big. There's a point that I'm getting to. Hang on to what I'm about to tell you. I'm like, all right, God. God said, listen, man, you're going you're gonna to preach in front of thousands. You're going to preach in front of thousands. Now, I haven't preached in front of thousands. I've preached in front of hundreds, but I ain't preached in front of thousands. And, and he told me, listen to what he told me. Don't judge what you're looking at by the fruit that you see at the beginning, because the fruit is going to double every time you speak, because the Holy Spirit is going to speak through you. And it's going to be sending out seeds that's going to cause things to grow. Now, watch this. I'm not going to get on this too much, because Joshua John will be on my video. Um He'll be on my video hopefully sometime this week. This is Listen to me what I'm telling you. For those of you in the state of Florida, listen to me what I'm telling you. Mark my words. Say this video. Call me out in a year because I'm here to tell you right now. My God said, listen, this is going to pop off. 
He sent me. This is a little old guy, man. You hear me? But I'm willing. I'm available. I'm down like four flats on the Cadillac for my team. I'm telling you this so you can be just like me. You are wired just like me. You have the same Holy Spirit as me, and you have the same mouth as me, and you got the same Bibles that you can get into the Word, feed your spirit, believe the truth, worship Him in spirit and truth, and get down with the King and watch Him do exceedingly abundantly more than you could ever dream or think according to the power that is working within you that is inside you that is on fire but yet we're going around spitting out smoke rings like puff the dragon poof poof man when we speak we should have fire coming out of our mouth in the mighty name of jesus i prophesy that over you but watch this god took me to the west coast i met pastors i met ministers i met guys that were on my ministry team i met people in the middle of in the central florida uh Want me to come preach at their place? I got two places over there. And listen, it's all genres. You hear me? God is gathering them up right now. I'm telling you right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, God is doing the Holy Ghost movement in my state. In the mighty name of Jesus, I'm prophesying that over here right now in Jesus' day. And he's bringing us together. So I'm asking you, what I'm asking you right now, to come in agreement with me and pray for unity, not only over the state of Florida, but over the nation. In the mighty name of Jesus, for unity, not division, not discord. People coming together to rock with Jesus, to win souls. You heard me? There are so many broken and lost souls out there. That is our calling. There's one thing that we cannot do when we're in heaven, and that's win souls. We are called to win souls. There are people out there that have never heard about Jesus. I wish I was making this up, but it's not. Uh, I, it's happened to me in the gym. Anyways, I have already reached out to pastors on the West Coast. Watch this. You talking about God using the least? I've reached out to, I got a, my spiritual father, the, um, the, my spiritual covering. When you're a pastor, you have to have a spiritual covering. Mike Gonzalez, my pastor out of Tampa, um, he's my spiritual cover. He's rocking and ready to go. My boy, uh, Kevin Brodus, that was on my ministry team, him and his team are ready to go. My church crew in Apopka, they're ready to go. I haven't even talked to Nathaniel Carter and Do and. Uh, Dominic Wilkins, man, in Orlando and Palm Bay. And then we got the East Coast people over here. I'm here to tell you, man, God will use you if you are willing. And I'm trying to tell you, we are putting a thing together that the Holy Ghost is just going to flow through. We're going to change the state of Florida. I'm prophesying that in the mighty name of Jesus, man. And I'm telling you, why won't he use you? Why won't he use us? He's looking for willing soul. He's looking for ones that are down like four flats on a Cadillac. He's looking for you to be ready. He's looking for you to move your feet. The Bible said God will lead. He will direct our footsteps everywhere we go. But if we're not moving them, man, he can't direct us. We're sitting still. We are mediocre. I'm here to tell you, if your pastor ain't speaking fire, if you don't leave his church we, and on fire, then he is preaching lukewarm, man. I'm trying to tell you, this Bible right here ought to electrify you. This ought to give you the truth. This ought to tell you who you are. You are equipped to go out to be victorious, be overcomers, to, be, to take no L's in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm here to tell you, what are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah, you got a ministry on here for sure. Everybody's got a ministry on here. Everybody wants to talk about, you know, what they what's going on in their life here on Facebook. What are we doing out in the world? You know, because that's where it's at, man. We're not going to win souls in the church. And I want to share this with my boy. Man, I'm trying to tell you, Joshua's got a word. I'm trying to tell you, God is bringing people from other states to this church right out here by my house, man, to rock this state of Florida. You heard me? He's bringing people. He's bringing soldiers. He's bringing warriors. He's bringing ones that had laid everything down and said, I'm yours, God. Use me. Take me. I'm down like four flats on a Cadillac. Let's get after it, God. You are my king. You are my savior. And with you, all things are possible. That's some things. All things are possible in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm trying to tell you, tell me one thing my king can't do. Man, he's going to pull them. And the Holy Ghost is the one that's going to bring them all in. We don't go to God. The Holy Ghost draws us in according to the word. Now, I'm not sitting here talking out of the side of my mouth. I'm giving you scripture. But if you want to see the Holy Ghost move, you got to be ready. You got to be willing. You got to be accepting the word. You got to know who you are. Because I promise you, if you don't know who you are in Christ, God can't use you, man. You're going to spit lukewarm scripture. You're going to, you're going to be 
contagious as a lukewarm Christian. And that ain't rocking. Revelation 3.16, Bible says straight up, God will vomit you from his stomach if you are lukewarm. You heard me? So, man, I'm trying to tell you. What's up, my man, Will Gonzalez? You, <laughs> my man, this is my boy. Hey, bro, I'm going to get a hold of you, man, because I'm trying to tell you it's time to unite. It's time for unity, bro. It's time to rise up, man. I'm trying to tell you to stomp a mud hole in the enemy, to win souls, man, to see these miracles, to see these things that God. Why do you think God sent us a helper? Why do you think? To do exceedingly abundantly more than we can ever dream or think. To lay hands upon the sick. To heal. To cast out demons. Man, I'm trying to tell you. There's nothing that the the, the, the baddest weapon in the whole entire world is dwelling inside of you. Come on. The baddest one. Ain't nothing can touch it. Nothing. Nada. But he's, go, he's working right now. He's wanting to use you. Are you available for your king? I don't know who this is for, but watch this, man. Trash in, trash out. Trash in, trash out. What are you infiltrating your body with? What are you taking in? Because I want to challenge you to change what you're doing in life. Because if you're not on fire, then nothing from nothing leaves nothing. You need to do something. You need to change something. You need to do something that you've never done before that's going to get your heart rate up there beating a little bit. You heard me? Do something different. Step out. Don't just step. Take a leap of faith. Take a leap of faith and trust that God is on the other side waiting, saying, come on, bro. He is your number one cheerleader. I'm telling you, he has created you for this moment, this time in your life to rise up. God said when the enemy comes up and he attacks you here, what does he do? Whoop! He rises up the standard. Come on, man. I'm preaching good. I don't know about y'all, but this is firing me up. I have been fired up all day about this word, all about this movement. And it takes us. It takes us as the son and daughters of the most high king. It takes all of us, man. It, the Bible said it takes all parts of the body of Christ. It takes a pastor. It takes an evangelism. It takes a worshiper. It takes an intercessor. It ta I'm trying to tell you, what are we doing? I'm just saying, man, if we're ready, we're, we're all yelling revival. We're all yelling, yeah, we want to go to Asbury. We want to go to Lee, Tennessee. We want to go to the college. No, let's have a revival right here. Are you equipped? Are you ready? You are. But are you walking in it? Are you operating in it? We're going to talk about all this right here, man. I've got notes. I got a couple of notes. We'll get through this. I'm about 27 minutes in. I'm pretty much on schedule, but Paul is talking about this, man. He's talking about operating the spirit, how it changes his life. And I'm here to tell you, man, when you operate in a full fruition of who God says you are and the power and authority, not only is it going to change the people that you're around, it's going to change you. Then you're going to realize who you are. Then you're going to get, and then it's going to start. You know what I'm saying? Listen, after the first time that I saw my legs grow out, my boy grew my legs out probably about almost an inch and a quarter. It was the whole DC shoe. But when I saw my leg grow, I, I about lost it. I said, how did you do that, man? Tell me. He goes, that's the Holy Ghost, man. That's God. He just grew your legs out. Now watch this. Pray for my back. The pain left. My legs grew out. I was golden. Listen, I couldn't tie my tennis shoe. I said, no, nah, God didn't do that. I'm fresh out of jail. You got to understand. I'm off the streets, man. I ain't seen none of this. And I got this pastor telling me that God just made my leg grow an inch and a half. And he said, it's in the Bible. I said, bro, you got to show me, show me, man, show me. And I'm down, I'm in. Man, after that, listen, I can't even make this up. I left that church the day he grew my leg out. And he said, you have that power too. I said, shut up. He said, I'm telling you. I said, if you tell me that I can go out and lay hands on somebody and cause their leg to grow because of the name of Jesus. He said, absolutely. Blew my mind, man. So I took off. I left the church. I went to Tropical Smoothie. I can't make this. This is the divine appointment. You heard me? I talk about this. Paul even talks about it in Ephesians 3. Why we have to be told. Not twice. Not three times. But maybe four times. I asked God a little while ago. God, you still want me to preach? I'm preaching the same thing over and over. He said, tell them again. They ain't hearing it the first time. Come on. Operating it, man. So I go to the Tropical Smoothie. I'm walking in there, get me a smoothie, and I see this pregnant woman come in, man. She's holding her back. <laughs> She's holding her back. You telling me that ain't the setup from our king? 
You tell me God didn't cause that girl to come in there with a backache, man. I'm telling you, you don't know my king if you didn't, man. That girl goes over there to sit down, and I don't listen. I know some of you are introverted. Pray, ask God to move in your life. I don't know. I'm not an introvert. I can't comment that on that, but I know that God is not in the business of disappointing. You pray for divine appointment, my God will bring you somebody else that's introverted. You guys are going to link up. You tell me my God can't do that. All things are possible for those who believe, and my God is working all things together for good for those who love him or call according to to his purpose. And I'm sorry for you. I'm getting loud, but man, I'm trying to tell you, this gets me excited. Every morning I'm praying for divine appointments, just like I pray for my kids. I'm expecting God to bring somebody to me. I'm expecting to pray for healing. Hey, it doesn't surprise me if I bind up a demon and cast it out. I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to war, man. So I pray for this. I asked the girl, I said, Hey, uh, is your back's hurting? She goes, it is. I said, listen, I said, one of your legs are short. Listen, I went on a limb. I told y'all, take a leap of faith. Not a walk of faith, take a leap of faith. I took a leap of faith because I trusted my king. I said, hey, how's your back feeling? She said, it hurts. I said, one of your legs are shorter than the other. She goes, how would you know that? I said, the Holy Spirit told me. I said, can I grow it out? Sure. What did Jesus say when he prayed for that man? Because of your faith, you were healed. That girl stuck her leg out. She's pregnant, you hear me? One leg shorter than the other, about that big. I go in there and I command. I didn't ask, I command. That's another thing, man. People need to learn how to pray, man. If God gives you the power and authority to, to lay hand upon the sick and they recover, you ain't got to beg. You ain't got to beg God. To, he already did it. Come on. And he gave you authority and power because you're a commander. You are called to be a general, but yet you sit back and you're a private, sitting on the sidelines, hoping somebody else will do it. But look here, man. So I said, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I command this leg to grow out. <laughs> God ain't in the distance of, uh, business of disappointing. You hear me? That leg grew straight out. I asked her to stand up. I commanded every vertebrae in her neck bone from her tailbone to line up in the mighty name of Jesus. Commanded them to line up. Commanded the muscles to loosen up and raise up off the disc. I commanded all discs to be full in the mighty name of Jesus. That girl was like, bro. My back is healed. I said, what did you expect? If we're going to pray, God's going to bring it. Listen, where that came from, I had no idea because I was a rookie. But it took a little bit. The faith of a mustard seed. You know why a faith of a mustard seed will move mountains? Because a, a mustard seed is the smallest seed possible. And the only thing that it can contain is faith. It has no room for doubt and unbelief. None. The Bible says it is, it is impossible to please God without faith. What, what does my shirt say? Faith over fear. You hear me? There's no room for doubt and unbelief. Doubt and unbelief is of the devil. And listen, if you don't know who you are, I promise you he's going to convince you that you're not. I promise you, man. He doesn't want you to know who you are because when you do, that's when you start things making things move. When you know who you are, that's when things start shaking. When you know who you are, that's when you're shaking hell. When you know who you are, then demons start to know who you are. When you know who you are, signs and miracles will follow, man. And look here. How are we separated from the people in the world? How are we different? By operating in our faith and our works, let the Holy Spirit work in us. Let me tell you, here's another story. I may not even get to Ephesians. I probably won't because I feel this is so important to tell you. What was I going to say, God? I missed all of that. Oh, I forgot what I was saying. I jumped right up off there. If somebody can put in the plans, I mean, in the comments, what I, what I was... <laughs> Please forgive me. But um, I don't know. So listen, I believe with every inch of my heart, man, I, you know, I've been preaching for a long time, man. I've been preaching. This is, I don't know if this is my 11th year or my 10th year preaching. Um, but there's so much that's going on with this movement that God is doing. And this movement ain't in just the state of Florida. This, this movement, people are thirsty for the word. People are seeking out God. People have a hole in their heart that they don't know what is missing right there. And they, they are seeking. They are looking for Christ. And we got to let people see Christ in us before we speak. And if we can't do that, then we need to figure out what is hindering that. You hear me? Because when Jesus walked up, they knew who he was. You heard me? And we are made in the image of Christ. We are have the same powers that Jesus had. 
And I'm trying to tell you, I pray and I believe that when people look at me, they, that they see Jesus. Come on. I mean, how we walk in, how we repping. Now, I've got one more thing. I'm probably not going to get on there, but this is for you guys. Man. Check this out. The Bible says straight up, and when Paul's talking about that, we are not to boast in our works. We are not. Why? Because we can't do none of these works without the Holy Spirit. There's nothing. I can't cast out a demon. I can't lay hands upon the blind and they get sight. I cannot raise the dead without the Holy Spirit. But with the Holy Spirit, all things are possible. You have to believe it, and then you're going to see it. But if you need to see it, you're not, I mean, if you have to see it before to believe it, it ain't going to happen. So take a step and walk out and who God has called you. Now watch this. God shared this with me. I was talking to my boy, Kevin Brodus in Tampa, mighty man of God, anointed probably more, just about more than anybody I know. And uh, we were talking and we started getting on about how the Holy Ghost is working in us. We talk about deliverance, the things we go through to give us knowledge of what we saw, what we go through. Because I guarantee you when he gives us, give me his story and I give him his, we walk into that right there. But watch this. This, this, the churches in America are so dead, they are so flat, they are so lazy, they are so tired, and they're so cessationist that they are not given the Holy Spirit. That pastors want to be movie stars, they want to stand up and look at them, look at me, let me be a dictator, let me run this stuff, you're under me, you're under my authority, only the pastor can lay hands, but that's a lie from the pits of hell. Watch this. God talked to Kevin and I about no face healing, no face deliverance. What? What are you talking about? No face deliverance, no face healing. Again, I have no powers without the Holy Spirit, right? Now, people see me, man, wherever I'm at, man, if they know who I am, hey, man, will you pray for me? It's on the constant, <clears throat> but I can't do nothing without God. God told me to do this. Kevin and I both, when we walk into our church, Watch this. Listen to me. I hope and I pray that you hear this. And I hope and pray that you walk in this. I hope and pray that this comes in you. I pray that it goes inside and that it resonates and it takes anchor and hooks. And you listen and you believe and you test God. My Bible test me to test God. And I've tested him and everything in this word. And it's never come back void, not one time. God is not one time spoken in this and it's not come true not one time right so we go in to the church you have the power to release the holy spirit you have the holy spirit listen Woo! okay thank you god that was so good check this out watch this john 12 62 I know I say this, but I'm praying that you are, listen, sometimes I'm telling you when I teach on, on Ephesians 3, it's going to talk about having it, having to hear the truth two to three times before it gets in, settles in, anchors in, resonates, and you believe it. And that's okay. This is new to some of you. Some of you are just getting in this. But watch this, man. In the book of John, chapter 12, verse 62. Jesus is talking to the talking to his disciples, and this is what he says. <clears throat> I have so much for you that your mind cannot bear it. According to the maturity of the disciples' walk, Jesus has given them everything that they can contain right there. The Bible talks about new oil coming, right? God is going to bless us with new oil. In the end time, God is going to pour out his spirit on all people, right? So watch this. John 25, 25, it's the last verse in the book of John. It says, this is, this is not all of Jesus's ministry, but I guess if we put it all in the book, the world could not contain it. So that tells me that Jesus did a lot of things that we can, they couldn't even write down because their mind couldn't even contain it. It tells me there is more that Jesus did in his ministry than what is speaking in this word. And I believe with every inch of my heart, according to the word, according to John 12, 62, that there's more. He said, I've got so much for you that your mind cannot bear it. So this is what I pray. I ask God to send ministering angels down to me to download according to my maturity and my walk as much as I can contain. Now, Mark, what are you talking about? I'm telling you, if you have, I use this example all the time. 
I know some of you heard it, but listen, if you got a three-year-old that's got a fork and he sticks it in the receptacle, it's going to tear his butt up. He's going to light him up and you tell him, hey, don't do that. And he's going to be like, why? You can't tell him that there's a direct current coming from the power box running through that receptacle that's going to light you up and shoot you. Why? The maturity of his mind, he can't contain it. So it's telling me right there that we have more that we have. There is more to get. There's more new oil. What are you praying for? What are you asking? What are you believing in the word? God has got a rhema. God has got treasures. God has got mysteries in this Bible for you that you have not discovered. God calls this the Bible alive. This word is alive. Why is it alive? Because when we get in it, it doesn't matter. Wherever we are in our walk, we can skim over a couple of verses, man, and it doesn't really matter. But then we come in the second time, like for instance, we go in and we read Matthew eleven twenty two, and you get in there and you read it the first time, and you're like, huh, okay. You get on down, you're skipping up. Now you get to the good part of what you're looking for. But you're going through some really tough times. God says, get back over there in Matthew 11, 22. Well, I just read it. But you get over there and that joker comes alive. It jumps plumb up off the sheet, off the paper. It gets inside you. It, it manifests in your spirit. It roots up. And you're like, whoa, whoa. I've never read that a day in my life. Come on. I'm trying to tell you, God is dying to show up and blow up in your life. He wants a relationship with you, man. Listen to me when I tell you, your relationship with God is just like your relationships here on, on earth. If you get in, you give him 60, 70%, but that other 30%, you're on TikTok, you're watching Facebook, Instagram, Reels, whatever it is, man, but you're not giving God the 100%. Listen, you're going to get 70% out of it. That's all you're going to get. Sorry about your luck, man. But, but if you're sold out for God, sold out, everything that is coming in for you, everything you're letting infiltrate your body, music, videos, TV, uh, your radio, what you're reading, the Bible, everything, man. Woo, the Lord, the Bible says, give us this day our daily bread. Our what? Daily bread. What is the bread? Right here. The Bible says that we shall not eat bread alone, but the words that proceed out of God's mouth. We shall not eat what? Bread alone, but the words. That, come on, man. I'm trying to tell you. Pick up your cross daily and walk with Christ. Are you dying to yourself? Are you dying to your flesh? Are you picking up the cross and walking with him daily? Come on, man. When do you think about God? I can't even make this up, man. I talked to somebody, man. They said, yeah, I pray to God on the weekend. <laughs> I said, what? They said, yeah, man, I ain't got time during the week, man, to get down with God, man. I said, I, I pray during the weekend. It's a lukewarm Christian if I've ever heard, man. And you're limiting God. You're stamping it right there and saying, that's all I can take of what you got for me. I, I can make it through the rest of the week on me. But the weekends, I'm going to need you. Come on. But that Saturday, you go out and have a drink. That Saturday, you go out and smoke that dupe. That Saturday, you bought that line. That Saturday, you rip a rip a pill. Come on. I'm talking to somebody. I'm preaching to somebody. Listen, get in there, man, and get after God. I don't care if you're smoking a dupe. I don't care if God, listen, that story from Jonah is a straight up truth. If you tell me it's not, then you're telling me that Jesus is a liar. And then you're telling me that the word is not true. Why would something fictitious be in there like that? You hear me? Jonah ran from God. Jonah had the spirit of rebellion. And God used him. Get started. Make a move. Don't just stick your toe in the water, man. Dive on in. Try God. See what he's wanting to do in you and through you. I'm trying to tell you everything. Listen, in 1 John 2, 6, it says if we are abiding in Jesus and Jesus is in us, then we are to walk on this earth just like Jesus and we are to talk. Just like Jesus here on this earth with power and with authority. So what are we doing, man? Quit just tiptoeing around. Quit asking people to do things. Quit begging God. Pray the Bible. Know the word and know that God is behind you. When God is for you, it doesn't matter who's against you. Saddle up. Put on your pseudo armor. Get ready for war. Go out expecting because you are becoming. You are his. You are becoming who God called you. You are becoming that, that warrior that God has called you to be. And if you don't think that, then I promise you, you're not. I promise you, you're not. You're going to be that same 
lukewarm Christian that is hit with the spirit of mediocrity, not the spirit of, of excellence. Sorry about your luck, man. I'm bringing truth. I'm bringing smoke. And I'm bringing stuff, man, to encourage you to go out and do these things. God has called you. He called you his. He appointed you. You are chosen. You are selected to do a certain. You got a slot that you got to get into. Listen, I am nobody. I'm telling you I'm the least. But God has hooked me up with a man in another country. I didn't know Joshua Johns last week. I met Joshua Johns because he had that Holy Ghost smoke that went up in front of him when he smoked, when he was preaching. I said, God, that guy's got some kind of anointing. That guy is on fire. I need to be around some people like that. I need to be with people who are getting down with God like me. If you hang out with five junkies, you're going to be the sixth junkie. If you hang out with six, five people that are on fire, you're going to become the sixth one on fire. If you hang out with five lukewarm Christians, I promise you, you will decrease. And you will become that lukewarm Christian. And I said, God, I need some of that, man. I need what he's got. If he's got that kind of anointing, that Holy, Holy Ghost smoke is coming up, I need some of that, man. And I messaged him. Watch this, man. This is so good. I messaged him. I go, hey, bro. Oh, no. I friended him. Look at, Listen to this. If this ain't our God, then we don't know him. Watch this. I never met this guy a day in my life. He had a reel with like 400,000. 400,000 likes on his, on his video. And I looked and I went down this page and he said, yo, I'm leaving Brazil in five days and I'm going back to the States. I'm going to a city in Florida called Merritt Island, Florida. I said, what? That's where I live. I live in Merritt Island, Florida. I'm like, whoa, I've got to meet this dude while he's here. So I just went on the ramp. You know, I'm, I'm thinking this dude is big time. He ain't going to talk to me, man. I'm just a little, I'm the least man. And listen. This is one of the most down to earth, Holy Ghost filled, loving man I've ever met in my life. And he is on fire. I left him a message. I go, hey, brother. I said, I'm a pastor. <clears throat> I live in Merritt Island, Florida. And I'm a contractor. I can pull permits for you. I can help you build churches. I can do whatever you need. Anything for the kingdom, I'm in. Man, this dude messaged me the next morning. He voice messaged me. I voice messaged him back. The next thing you know, we were on the phone. This dude, I have no idea who he is. He has no idea who I am. But let me tell you something. God has hooked me up with a man that is on fire. You hear me? He's got that Holy Ghost fire that is raining through him. And he got no limits on God. He don't put a cap on God. He don't draw a line and say, that's it, God. We can't do no more. That's as far as we go. He does not grieve the Holy Spirit. He does not quench the Holy Spirit. He says, bring it, God. We got it. Use me. Send me. What is? What does he say? What does he say in Isaiah 6? Send me, boss. I'm available. Send me. Is that is that your spirit? Send me. Man, I'm trying to tell you, God is doing big things right there. You better get involved. You better put yourself, you better insert yourself into the movement of God. Move your feet. Be ready. Do what you're called to do. Jesus said, oh, what is it, God? Um, woo. Oh, oh, oh. I'm man, I might miss this. Don't quote me on this. But I believe with every heart, inch of my heart. Oh, where was it, God? I can't remember. Um, it's in Matthew. But Jesus said, do all things that I've commanded you to do. We are commanded to do the great commission. Come on. Jesus said, do and obey everything that I've commanded you to do. So if you're not, you're being disobedient to God. If you're not laying hands upon the sick, you're being disobedient. If you're not casting out demons, you're being disobedient. You are commanded to do these things. If you're not raising the dead or trying, you're being disobedient. If God gives you that situation, man, you need to be stepping in and saying, this, with the same spirit that raised Lazarus from the dead, I command you to come up, stand up, and get a heartbeat in Jesus' name. Come on. If you don't, you're disobedient. You are commanded to do those things. My man is not shy. He is like me. He is wired. Do you think God made a mistake by hooking this up? Do you think God made a mistake by sending me to Tampa? Do you think God made a mistake when he sent me to Palm Bay to do a mass deliverance with, with Nathaniel Carter and my man Will Gonzalez right there? That was That's right there. 
We'll get, right there. We do mass deliverances, man, in churches. We ain't scared. We bring the truth. We bring the smoke. We bring the Holy Ghost. We are here to set the captives free. We are here to win souls, man. We are here to do what God has called us to do. And we ain't stepping back. We ain't drawing the line. We're diving in head first, man, with everything that we got. Not worrying about anything. Because the Bible says when God's for us, what? It doesn't matter who's, who's against us. It doesn't matter. A weapon may form, but it ain't going to prosper in Jesus' name. Come on. So with that being said, I talked to him a little bit more. He goes, Mark, I want to plant seven churches in the state of Florida. I go, I'm in. What do we got to do? Let's get after it. This church, listen, this church that my boy is coming from Brazil is at the end of my neighborhood. I can hit it with a golf ball. Are you telling me God didn't plant me here on purpose? I'm man, I'm listen. Am I chosen? 100%. Am I sick? 100%. Are you chosen? 100%. Are you sick? 100%. Are you called up? 100%. What are you doing? Are you rocking that spirit of mediocrity? Are you rocking with that spirit, spirit of excellence? Do you know who you are in Christ? Or is the enemy telling you different? Are you co-signing with God? Or are you co-signing with the enemy? Who are you rocking with? Who are you riding with? Do you have the enemy in your seat? Listen to him chirp in your ear and tell you everything that you're not? Are you rocking with the king? Who says you are undefeated? You are mine. You are chosen. I've set you apart. I put you in that game. I know you're going to be victorious. You are a warrior. You ain't no punk. You are a warrior. You're a frontline warrior. You're a general. You're a five-star general. You're equipped to fight these weapons, man. And you will not take an L because the enemy is nothing but a loser. Nothing. We take W's in Jesus' name. We take B's. We take victories because our king is undefeated. He's untried. He has no rival, no competition. He laughs at the enemy. He laughs at him so hard. I said, look here, bro. <laughs> I'm going to write a book and I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you how I'm going to kick your hind in. I'm going to tell you how your end is going to be. But watch it don't happen. Buddy, I'm trying to tell you, we are walking in the birth pains of end times. I'm not going to teach or um, preach on end times right now. But I'm trying to tell you, if you don't see it, that you're blinder than a bat. Come on. What's up, Beth Blackman? Woo! I'm trying to tell you, man, the Holy Ghost fire. Man, and listen to me. Mediocre, medi that spirit of medi mediocrity is contagious. I'm trying to tell you, it is contagious. And I'm trying to tell you, I've seen more pastors with a spirit of mediocrity. I've seen so many pastors that walk around like Puff the Dragon, and all they do is spit smoke. You are baptized with the Holy Ghost fire. When you speak, the Holy Ghost fire should come from your mouth. When you talk, whoo, dude, I'm trying to tell you. I'm telling you what my Bible says. I'm telling you what my king gave us. Don't walk in that, man. Don't walk in that mediocrity, man. That is not a gift from God. It's not. My God says straight up, man, I bless you with the Holy Ghost fire. Walk in that, man. I don't know who this is for, but I'm trying to tell you, God has called you to do more than what you're doing. He has set you up not to live in poverty. He has set you up to be victorious. He has set you up to win in spiritual warfare. The Bible says straight up, man, we don't fight spirit, spiritual warfare with carnal weapons, but the tearing down a stronghold through God himself. What are we equipping ourselves? Why are we taking L's in life? There is so much more in life, but yet we sit flat with it and we lay down on the couch and we expect other people to do what God has called us to do. I'm telling you, man, if your God is not, if your eyes and your heart is not focused, look, the Bible talks about, I just, I just taught on this. I think it was last week that the eyes of our heart right here is what we see with. Jesus said we have to have eyes to see and ears to hear. Come on. And if you're not seeing with your heart, then you're not walking with your king. Sorry about your luck, because these right here, these are flesh eyes. These are outside eyes. These right here, the internal where the temple is, is in our heart. The temple where the Holy Spirit dwells, right here. This is where you're looking with your eyes right here. And if you're not directed by your heart and by where God is directing you there from the Holy Spirit that is dwelling inside you, be prepared. Be, be prepared to take on shots. Be prepared to go through spiritual warfare that you were never intended to go through. Come on. Man, I'm trying to tell you. Every spiritual warfare that you go through is not dedicated to you. Every war and battle that you let the enemy come in is for because of your ignorance and because of your free will and because of your flesh that you gave way to. I'm trying to tell you. We create 
more warfare than we should be walking in. I'm telling you right now, I'm preaching good. I don't know about you, but this is blessing me. I'm listening to myself <laughs> preach, man. And I'm like, come on, give it to him, God. Give him that Holy Ghost, man. The spirit of excellence God has blessed you with. And here's another thing. You want to know why most of us don't walk in that spirit of excellence? This part right here, fear. I don't know how to take that off. We walk in fear. Listen to me. I'm going to close out on this. I'm not going to stay on here much longer. We're going to pray. I'm definitely praying for some other people. But a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of ministers, a lot of people, let me, let me just hit this. A lot of people think that pride is a pinnacle point of the hierarchy, hierarchy and how demons are, because pride is what got that uh, Satan thrown out of heaven, right? But it's not, it's fear. Fear is a pinnacle point of all demons, man. And everything comes off of fear. We operate in fear, we don't operate in the Holy Ghost fire. We operate in fear, then we got the spirit of anger. We operate in fear, now we're dealing with the spirit of lust. We operate in the fear, now here comes pride. All of that stuff comes from fear that we walk in. But listen to me. First Timothy 1, 7, this is what it said. I did not bless you with a spirit of fear, but with power, love, and a sound mind. Listen, if you look those words up, man, in the Greek, I'm here to tell you. God said, I didn't bless you with a spirit of fear, but I bless you with power. Where does, what does the word be power in, in the Greek mean? It means the Holy Spirit. So God said, I bless you with the Holy Spirit. I, I bless you with power, love. What does love mean? Who represented love when they walked in the gospel? By Jesus. He said, I didn't bless you with fear, but I bless you with the Holy Spirit. I bless you with Jesus. I bless you with a sound mind. Your mind, you have a Christ-like mind, just like your creator. He gave you the same mind. So these thoughts that you have that are good are from our Father. These thoughts that you're supposed to go pray for that person is from our Father. Don't operate in the fear. Because I'm telling you right now, God will fill you with, with boldness and confidence. The Bible says it. The Bible says we have not because we ask not. If you want Holy Ghost fire, ask God. Father, fill me with Holy Ghost fire. I'm not feeling what I got. Fill me from my toe, from my bottom of my feet to the top of my head, down my arms, out my finger. Fill me with that Holy Ghost fire. Father, fill me with confidence. Fill me with boldness. Equip me. Send me out. Help me to follow my purpose. Man, let me tell you something. You walk in your purpose, it'll change your life. You'll finally get a grip on what's going on in your life. But if you're rocking in a spirit of mediocrity, you're rocking a lukewarm Christian, and you're not going to walk into it. Listen to me. If you're rocking with demons, man, God will use you whatever. But I'm trying to tell you, you've got a major divine assignment. You hear me? You have a big job here on earth. You wouldn't be created if you didn't. God created you for his pleasure and for his joy and for a purpose here on earth. And we all have that, man. We all have it. And when we walk in that, oh man, it's just, it's what you're called for. But if you got demons residing in your soul that will control your will, your mind, and your emotions, you we cannot operate in emotions. I'm going to try to stay on track. But listen, you cannot operate on your emotions. You have to operate on the truth. Because if you operate in the emotions, you're going to walk up there and that fear is going to hit you. And off to the left, you're going to miss your divine appointment. You heard what I'm saying? We all have a purpose on here, man. And it's so much easier when we do it with that Holy Ghost fire, with that Holy Ghost fire. And it's free and it's there for you. God gave it to you. If you listen, if you've got that Holy Ghost fire, why wouldn't you maximize that out? If you knew, listen to me, let me ask you this. If you knew 100% that you walked and operated with that Holy Ghost fire everywhere you go, if you demonstrated the love of Christ everywhere you go, if you spoke about Christ at least one time a day, do you not think that wouldn't change your life? Don't you think that would be putting you in motion for your purpose, for your divine assignment? Come on, man. God is looking for willing, available vessels, hands and feet. We are called to be the hands and feet of God. We are called to change this world. Listen to me. Don't tell me it ain't you. God took the, Jesus took the lowest. He took misfits to go out to change this world. 
equipped them and they went out and they were victorious. They didn't take no L's and they knew what? They didn't go to Bible college. They didn't go to church. They wasn't hanging out. Man, he went and got a tax collector, man. He went and got a fisherman. He went and got people that were causing problems. And to come follow me and change your life. And they believed. You know how many times Jesus said, listen, I'm, 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 I'm a numbers freak, man. 85 times in the gospel, Jesus said, we must believe. Believe. Because do you believe? Because of your faith. Come on, man. Where is your faith? And, they, and listen to me. I said it earlier. I'm going to say it one more time. That faith of a mustard seed will move mountains. The Bible says that Jesus, I mean, that Peter walked on water with little faith. Imagine what God can do in you with more than a little faith. Come on. Man, I'm trying to tell you. What are you expecting from God? What do you want from God? What are you giving God? Half of you or all of you? Romans 12, 1 says this. I beseech you to give your life a living, holy sacrifice that is pleasing and acceptable to the Lord. What did he say? I beseech you to give your life a living, holy sacrifice that is pleasing to him. He wants all of you, man. He does not want 99% of you. He wants 100% of you. Then and only then will he put you on your divine assignment. Quote me, do whatever you want, man. He'll use a rebellious man, but I'm trying to tell you, you'll get more out of it out of yourself when he does that. Make yourself available. I know, I just contradict myself. Let me backtrack. Because I'm not going to speak for God. God can do all things, man. So he can use that rebellious, but it will change your life if you make yourself available and give 100%. We want so much. We ask for God, change our life, change our cir circumstance, change our situation. But we don't want to change. We just want a microwave quick. A mic we're, we live in a microwave uh, world. We want something happening just like this. But see, God's concentrating on your assignment. He's concentrating on your walk. He don't care about what you're going on. Listen, I don't know who this is for, but listen to me when I tell you this. If God's not sweating about your situation in life, I don't think you ought to be sweating either. You heard me? God don't sweat over that small stuff, man. And you, he knows who the enemy is. He knows what he's bringing against you. Are you sweating over your situation? What are you doing, man? 50% in, 50% out. 100% in, 100% out. I'm trying to tell you, dream big, pray big, get after it, man. Know you serve a big God. Quit making him so small in your life, you hear me? He loves you more than you could ever dream or think. He is wanting to do this, man. But we put that wall up and said, yeah, <laughs> I can't do that. I told you this once, I'll tell you again. My Bible doesn't tell me at all. One time in the Bible that I can't. Matter of fact, it tells me I can Come on. So speak that over yourself, man. I'm not going to prophesy. Over I'm not going to speak that, man. You need to do this, man. People are dependent on too many pastors, too many preachers to walk and do what God is telling you to do. Speak life over yourself. Speak life over your kid and war for him, man. Knowing that we got an adversary out there that's kind of trying to come at us, man. And I'm trying to tell you, God's wanting to do something big. You want revival? Make yourself available. Step out. Pray with people, man. Bless people. Be a blessing to people. Watch this, man. I'm going to end this on this, all right? And then I'm going to just listen to this, man. This is what I pray over myself on the constant. I am the king's son. I walk in high favor. I'm truly blessed. I'm more than a conqueror in Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. No weapon formed against me will prosper. When God's for me, it doesn't matter who's against me. I'm a soldier. I'm a servant. I'm a soul winner for my Christ. Everything that I touch, my everything my hand touches prospers. My business will prosper. My workers will prosper. I am a funnel for the, for the gospel. I'm not a reservoir. I will not be broke another day in my life. I'm a ground shaker. I'm a Florida shaker. I'm a nation shaker. And I'm a world shaker in the mighty name of Jesus. What are you speaking over your life, man? That is straight scripture. That is straight up what my king says about me. I know what my king says about me. I know who he says I am. Do you? Do you know what he speaks over you? He calls you a warrior. He calls you his. Know who he is. Know who you are, man. Ah, man, listen. 
There's big things going on in this world. Don't let it go by. Be a part of it. Get jumped in. If you see something going on in your county and your nail, be a part. If you see a conference, be a part. Listen, I was talking to another friend today. Don't miss a mark. The Bible talks about a homeless man. Don't put the homeless man at the foot of the uh, at the foot of the pasture and put the rich man in the front. You heard me? That means don't blow off them people that are homeless out there. Them people didn't mean to be homeless. I guarantee you 9% of them. And watch this. You may deny praying or laying hands or speaking to them about Jesus. And that person right there could be a Billy Graham. That person right there could go out and save millions. You heard me? And God was counting on you to pray for him. And you missed your divine appointment because your pride was too much. You rise above. You didn't want to be available. It's going to take up too much time. You're running late. Man, I'm telling you, I'm preaching good. I don't know who this is for, but I'm telling you right now. <clears throat> know this, man. The reason why, listen to me. I mean, I'm going to put that up, man. I see you. Uh, I see that, Judy. Look here, man. This right here is why God wants to do stuff in you. This is why he sent a helper. This is why he has equipped you to be victorious in life. This is why you should take no L's. Jesus loves you, man. He loves you so much that he died on that cross because of your knuckleheadedness. And not only did he do that, but he knew because he was going to die, the enemy was going to come and attack you. So he sent you a helper, that Holy Spirit. I promise you I was getting on here to, to preach on Ephesians 3. I promise you I was, but I knew that God was just wanting to. Man, I'm trying to tell you. I hope you receive this. I hope this resonates with you. I hope it goes down and just manifests. It blows up in you. And something just takes root in you. Because you are more than a conqueror, man. You are more than what you're seeing right now. And I don't know who this is for, but listen to me. God's not concentrating on the sin that is in your life right now. He's not. He's concentrating on the finished work of what he's doing in you. The Bible says that he will continue to do a work inside of you until the day you die or until the day Jesus returns. He's doing work in you, man. Help God help you. You hear me? Help God help you. Get in the word, man. Feed that spirit, man. I'm trying to tell you. And if, you, if you're not getting it the first time, then go back and read it. I tell people to read two chapters a day and pray for five minutes. That first chapter didn't mean make any sense. Go back and read it again. If it didn't go, if it didn't make sense that third time, then ask the Holy Spirit. Listen, listen to me when I tell you this. When you get down and read the word, invite the Holy Spirit to sit right next to you. Ask him for a rhema. Ask him for a nugget. Ask him to breathe on that word. So when it comes into you, it comes alive. Therefore, you're not just saying, read it out loud. Read the word out loud to you because you're reading it. You're speaking it. You're taking it in as you speak it. And I'm trying to tell you, the devil hates it when he hears the word and he hates it when you read it. I don't know about you, but I hate him so much. I want to do everything that bugs him. Come on. I'm telling you, man, saddle up. Get your, get, your, get your armor on, man. Go to war. Tell people about Jesus. Let them know that he loves them. Let them know that God loves them so much that he gave his only son, the only one that he ever had. And he gave him to take the worst beating in the whole wide world. And Jesus didn't take one beating. A lot of people don't know this. I'm going to write out. Jesus took two beatings. He took a beating for preliminaries. And then he went and got beat with a cat of nine tails. Then he had to carry the cross, 300 pounds by himself, take it up, and then they drove the nails. Right here, check that out, man. Check out that Jesus tattoo. See that nail right here? Ooh. See that nail? That's right where they drove that nail through Jesus on both sides. And they drove it through his ankles. And they didn't put the block up underneath our Jesus so he could rest the weight. They let him hang there, and they let that pain hit him. You hear me? And when he asked for a drink, they gave him vinegar. Come on. After the worst beating in the whole wide world, he did that for you. He did that to make you righteous. He did that to make you holy. He made he did that to make you unstained. He made that to make you unwrinkled. He made that for you to get make a way to get into heaven. Understand this. 
God's not making a way to keep you out of heaven. He's making a way for you to get into heaven. And that's the fact. A lot of people don't understand that. God is trying to make a way for you. Just takes a little bit of discipline, takes a little bit of uh, focus, man, and obedience. I'm riding out, man. I don't know. I just, man, listen, don't make God small because he makes you so big. Ask God to let him, to let you see yourself through his eyeballs. That's new for me, too. This is what God told me. You need to walk into who I've really called you to be. You put yourself down. You don't recognize who I've called you to be. You need to rise to the top. You're chosen. You're selected. You're called. Know who you are in Christ because what you got, not everybody's got. A lot of people want what, what, want what you have, so give it to them, man. Go get it. It is there for you, and it's free. Anybody need prayer, man? I'll pray for you right now. I know I saw a lot of people coming in and out. Um, I know there was a few people that I saw at the gym. They said they're going to get on. They wanted prayer. Um, I know, Tanya, you said you needed somebody for prayer. I didn't get to read any of these comments, man. I hope this blessed you, man. <clears throat> Um, hey, for those of you who are on here, come on, man. Listen, I got Amy Elizabeth coming on to my um, podcast. She'll be here next uh, next Tuesday. This woman is very anointed. She is, man, she has dealt with narcissism in her marriage. She has been homeless, living on a couch with kids, living out of her truck. And God gave her a promise. He said, I will give you a, man, I'm not even going to blow this, man. Oh, man, I'm trying to tell you, but tune in next Tuesday. This Friday, me and my boy Colton, Colton Ryder, we're going to be rocking Friday night. We're going to breathe the smoke. Y'all bring your bring your uh, your seatbelt, man, and strap in because between him and I, man, bringing that fire, I'm trying to tell you, that Holy Ghost fire, that dude is a firecracker. He brings straight up smoke. Man, the Holy Ghost is going to be there. I'm calling it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Call it out. Hey, listen, my God is dying to show up and blow up in your life. Call him, ask him, pray about it. Say, show up, God, I've been fighting you. He, all he wants is an invitation. You heard me? Okay, here we go. This is one of them. Praise God. Facebook is giving me issues. I missed most of this. I'll go back and watch tomorrow. I do need prayer, though. I don't know if you were the one um, for lower back pain and neck and wooziness. Tanya does. Tanya, I got you next. Christine, I'm going to get Tanya right now. Christine, tell me what you need prayer for. I'm going to get Tanya right now. Tanya, listen to me. Watch this, guys. I wish we had, man, I wish we had a camera. Tanya. I want you to sit down, put your back plumb up against the wall. What if your legs are shorter? Remember what I told you guys? Remember I told you that God, our life is a setup. I know that God is going to heal Tanya's back pain. Why? Because I've already been around this mountain a couple times. God has already showed up and blowed up. I know how to pray. I know what I'm doing. Paul said, I learned from demonstration. I learned from the pastor that grew my legs out. I learned, I saw, I went and applied what I saw according to the word. According to the word and according to what I saw, I'm about to do for Tanya. And I'm trying to tell you, God's going to show up and blow up in her life. All right. <clears throat> so, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus of Nazareth, I command that short leg to grow out. In the mighty name of Jesus in Tanya, I command that right leg to grow out. Get out past the left leg right now. Hip, loosen up in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, I was stood. My hips are on the line. Okay. Shut, tell me which uh tell me which leg is on the is, is shorter than the other, Tanya. I'm telling you guys, this I don't even know what state she lives in, but I'm here to tell you God's gonna heal this girl right here, dead on this video, man. Which leg is shorter than the other that's causing your hips to be on the line, Tanya? Speak to me so I can pray for it. God's going to heal her right now. This is demonstration. What God is going to do for her right now, what God is going to go do in, to, to her through me, he will do for you. I promise you. Acts 10, 24. Peter says, I've come to the realization that God shows no partiality. What he does for Peter, he'll do for me. What he did for Jesus, he's going to do for me. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I command a supernatural miracle in Tanya's left leg. I command that left leg to grow out in the mighty name of Jesus. I command that hip to unlock, grow out right now in Jesus' name. Left leg grow. How's that left leg growing looking right now, Tanya? Thank you. 
Did your left leg grow? I know it did. Left leg grow. I command you in the mighty name of Jesus, grow out. All the way, hip unlocked. I command those hips to align right now in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus. I feel warmth in my hips. Are your legs aligned? I know you, man. Yeah, that's that Holy Ghost fire running through you, man. I'm trying to tell you. Listen, God has healed so many people through Zoom on here, through my podcast, through my phone. I'm trying to tell you, do not draw the line on God. God is omnipresent. He's always there. He will do exceedingly abundantly more than you can dream or think according to the power that works within you. Tell me he won't do it, man. Come on. Hips aligned right now in Jesus' name. I want you to stand up right now, Tanya. If those legs are straightened up, I want you to I want you to stand up. All right, Tanya, stand up. I'll pray for you right here. God's going to heal you right now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, from the neck bone to the tailbone, and Tanya, I command every vertebrae to line up from the neck all the way to the tailbone. And Father God, I command every muscle to loosen up. To raise up off the disc in her back. And I command those discs to be full in Jesus' name. Tanya, I want you to take a deep breath right now. Take a deep breath. Now blow out. Pain, I command you to go. In the mighty name of Jesus, leave. In the mighty name of Jesus. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Listen, I do this, man. This is not, this is rookie stuff right here. This is bubblegum stuff right here. God does this all the time. He, it's simple, you know, but the enemy tries to hem us up, tries to jack us up, tries to take away our power and authority. But I'm trying to tell you, my God works in us and through us and he heals it. And I've seen it too many times. And God is not a respecter of Tanya. He's going to heal her right now. <clears throat> um, Where's that other girl? All right, Christine. Christine, you need to tell me what you need to pray for. If you don't want to tell me, you can message me. I can pray, I'll pray for you through uh, my messenger. Um, Tanya, tell me how you're feeling. Amen. The feeling, what she said, the feeling is back in my lower left leg. Praise God. Father God, I command that the sciatus nerve in her leg to raise up off the nerves that's calling that calling, causing that paralysis in, in her leg. That spirit of infirmities. I bind you in Jesus' name. I command you to come up and out, Latanja. Looser right now. I speak freedom over her right now. And I command 100% restoration in her body right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Woo! Come on now. Jesus is king, man. I'm trying to tell you. Where you put a cap on God, where you draw a line in the dirt, that's it. That's as far as you're going to go. And if you say you ain't going to get healed, bet it. You stamped and approved that there's no healing. Fact. I told you about the power of words. All right. You good? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Come on. All right. I'm going to pray this out. Father, we love you so much. We thank you for the word. Thank you that it's true. Thank you that it never comes back void, Father. I thank you for speaking through me, Father. I pray that the words that I spoke that just heads out and hit the destination or where it was supposed to go. Father, I pray you anoint it, magnify it. And I just pray that you put a fire under everybody's feet that is listening to this on, on live and on replay, that you're moving their feet in the mighty name of Jesus, God, headed to the direction in which you directed them. We love you and thank you for the cross in your name. Amen. Well, let's see. Uh, what's today? Tuesday? I don't know. I'm listening. I'm going to get my boy Joshua Johns on here ASAP as soon as we can. And, uh, it's going to be fire. You see my boy come on there. I'm trying to tell you, we're going to blow up this, blow up what God is doing in our life. I love you. God bless you. And uh, you know what time it is. Yeah, yeah. Come on, man. Jesus is king. <laughs>